People often had an aversion to putting something, like putting on a headset. For sure. <laughs> like there's that maybe mental barrier to get over to even put on the device. Whereas putting on a pair of glasses, you don't have that same, I guess, mental yeah. hill to, to go over. So today it's uh, being sold as part of a developer program, sure. targeting developers to build content on it. We really want to you know, seed as promising content and use cases on the device so that when it does become a consumer device, uh, people have fun things to do. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Masters of Innovation. I think we're on episode seven officially, although we've had some bonus episodes. It's all, it's all a little bit confusing, but Anyway, uh, the latest episode is a really cool one because I was able to catch up with an old friend of mine, which is uh, Summer Wu of uh, Snap or formerly Snapchat. Um, and they've got a really cool thing that they're, they're bringing to market or have brought to market, which is the Snap Spectacles. Spectacles being their kind of flagship mixed reality, augmented reality glasses or smart glasses. And it's a really exciting time for the kind of smart glasses market. You know, you've got stuff like the Meta Ray-Bans, which I've got a pair of right here. Now, they don't have the full kind of... Uh, augmented or mixed reality capability, but they've got amazing cameras in them. You know, I take really great pictures and snaps. I'll throw a few up uh, now so we can have a look, but some of the quality of the, those, uh, those, those lenses are, are pretty nuts. Um, obviously, Meta as well, then uh, talks about the Orions. These aren't real Orions. These are my 3D printed Orions from a Twitter user, um, giving a kind of signal of intention of where Meta's kind of going in this space, uh, full augmented reality in a smart glasses frame. The challenge, obviously, is that manufacturing costs are so high uh, I think there was quoted somewhere that it was about $10,000 just to manufacture the Orions. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, so Summer Wu, I, I met during my time at Microsoft. She obviously was uh, working in the engineering area uh, for, for HoloLens previously and now obviously at Snap. So um, without further ado, why don't we get into the conversation and hear what Summer Wu has got to say about the new Snap spectacles. Okay, hey everyone, uh, my name's Alex, and uh, this is a special episode of Masters of Innovation, uh, and I've got a really good friend of mine, uh, Summer Wu from Snap, uh, who's brought over the new spectacles, which I've just been kind of testing out. So Summer, really great to see you. Hey Alex, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> no, it's awesome. And and uh, the spectacles, right? I mean, they're pretty cool. We uh, uh, we were kind of comparing like, um, you know, uh, to the HoloLens and all this stuff. So maybe you could tell us a bit about yourself. Obviously, you used to work at Microsoft back in the day, back on HoloLens. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your kind of background and your time sure. at HoloLens and all the way through to now. Yeah, so yeah. we know each other from Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, I spent three and a half years there, starting in 2019, working on the HoloLens 2 developer platform. So yes. uh, worked on Unreal Engine. Yeah. MRTK. MRTK. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit on Babylon, nice. even bringing yeah, 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 other yeah. frameworks to HoloLens. And had a chance to work a lot with our external partners at Microsoft who are using HoloLens sure. and then helping them. Know, build out their use cases and making sure our platform supported that. Nice. Uh, and then in 2021, I ended up joining Snap, mm. uh, spent a little bit of time working on the monetization side of AR, cool. working on sponsored AR. And that was mostly through like the, the app, I guess, and yeah, like through iOS, the mobile app. Android. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was helping advertisers mainly sure. build AR experiences and then deliver those to Snapchat users nice. through the camera. Uh, so I spent some time in mobile AR, uh, and then this past year had a chance to join the Spectacles team and Snap Lab, and that's been so much fun. So today I lead experiences at uh, on Spectacles, so uh, kind of lead our first party studio in building first party lenses and content on device, and also work a lot with our partnerships team and uh, cool. third party creators in building for Spectacles. And, and it's it's such a cool uh, device. I was just kind of getting hands on with uh, with it. I've never tried it before. Um, there's like some hallmarks that are like you know reminding me of, of stuff like Hololens, but then when you look at the form factor, how small it is compared to something like a Hololens is quite impressive. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit about Spectacles. Obviously, it's it's developer focused at the moment um tell us a bit about the device yeah yeah it's really incredible how much tech the team has 100%. been able to yeah. squeeze into such a small form factor uh and frankly i think it can do pretty much everything hollands can do granted spectacles you know has had a couple more years sure. than the hollands too had sure. i'm sure if hollands continued down that train it would also be smaller by now um but really incredible um kind of 
the form factor of yep. the device and everything it's able to to do. So today it's uh, being sold as part of a developer program sure. targeting developers to build content on it. We really want to, you know, seed um, it's promising content and use cases on the device so that when it does become a consumer device, uh, people have fun things to do totally. and valuable things to and do. And it's a really impressive piece of kit. And, and one of the things that jumped out at me straight away, as you mentioned, there's, there's no LiDAR detection integrated into the device, which immediately I was a bit like concerned about because I was thinking, right, I know AR devices and typically they use like, you know, uh, LiDAR mapping to map the floor and understand it. But actually, even without the LiDAR, the hand detection was really nice. I was able to grab things. I was able to pinch and zoom and, 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 uh, and interact really well. So I'm really impressed with the, the hand tracking. That's, uh, I assume the team's been working quite a lot on that. Yeah, we've got an awesome computer vision team based in Vienna mm. that has been you know, creating custom hand tracking algorithms and training those models for this device. And it comes down to really the optimization for form factor. You know, every sensor you add, if you added a depth sensor yeah. uh, onto the device, that would just yeah. take more power. Exactly, and more then, power, more weight. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. where would you fit it? You know, yeah. you might see another sensor there. You'd mm. have a larger, bulkier frame. Yeah. And it's so, all trade-offs, right? Especially yeah. in hardware, which is extremely difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And so Snap's very much focusing on that, uh, getting as small a form factor as possible so that uh, people can take this device on the go and out and about rather than yeah. you know, be limited to where they're wearing it. I know one of the things we discovered with Hollands, for instance, is that uh, people often had an aversion to putting something, like putting on a headset. For sure. <laughs> like there's that maybe mental barrier to get over to even put on the device, whereas putting on a pair of glasses, you mm. don't have that same, I guess, mental yeah. hill to, to go over. Totally, and it's it's an interesting one, even just from a social perspective. Like, um, like as you know, I, I recently got the, the Meta Ray-Ban, so I've been kind of mm -hmm. testing those out. Um, obviously, there's no screen in, in the, the Ray-Bans, it's, it's all mm -hmm. audio, um, but it's interesting even just like, you know, with the camera, you know, and it, yes, there's the lights that goes on when you're recording, but then like, if I do it in a public place, do people know I'm recording? There's the, all these kind of like Google Glass kind of considerations that, you know, we're kind of working through, but mm -hmm. my initial... Uh, experience has been fairly positive people are like generally are quite open to it to a certain degree and i think you know as long as you're respectful about the times that you're using like recording mm -hmm. features and stuff i think people are uh, are pretty good so i think certainly when we, you know we talk about spectacles i mean it's a, it's a similar kind of concept because there's obviously cameras in the device you can record mm -hmm. um but what i was really impressed with was the mixed reality recording right so maybe tell us a yeah. bit about the capture because i think that the ability to get content from them and collaborate on it is is pretty cool that's what I think is one of the coolest features yep. of Spectacles, how easy it is to mm. take a capture with AR content on the real world. So the left button is solely dedicated to capture. So there are only two buttons on the device, one yep. to turn on or wake up the device, sure. and then the other ones to capture. Mm. I mean, it probably comes from Snap's DNA <laughs> as you know, a camera company yep. and being like the Snapchat app opening straight to the camera. Sure. So that was a top priority, being able to capture content. But yeah, you just press it and then you automatically start recording video with AR content on it. Uh, it defaults to 30 seconds. I believe you can adjust that uh, duration though in sure. the companion app. And then you can import that capture through uh, directly to your phone. Nice. And, and and I think what's cool is obviously there's the direct like capture. So seeing through your eyes and we've seen that before with stuff like HoloLens, although there were challenges around doing that. Um, but what I really liked as well was that with the companion app, you could actually record and see in mixed reality. So it's not just through my eyes. I'm in the picture and we'll probably throw up the video that we just took uh -huh. of me playing this kind of boxing game. But um, literally you can see me and the AR content um, and you're seeing it from a kind of third party perspective, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we call that feature spectator. Nice. I know we had a spectator view, uh, yeah. like some sort of software to yeah. do that for Holland's. It was a bit janky though. It was a though. pain to yeah, yeah, set yeah. up. Yeah. And so spectator for spectacles is just built right into the mobile app. Nice. You can just turn it on and mm. then immediately get a third party view because, very cool. you know, AR is super cool, but it's very isolating if mm. only you can see it and no one else around you knows what you're doing. It just yeah. looks like you're off and you're own little world and so yeah we want to make it really easy for other people to be able to see what's totally. going on and i think that's really important especially you know when it comes to people sharing their experiences with the device i think it's mm -hmm. really useful to kind of get that kind of view and and so obviously like 
developers are the core focus. What's mm-hmm. really cool about the Spectacles is obviously it's not a big capital expenditure that you need to make. Obviously, it's a subscription service, so you get the device and it's mm-hmm. like, is it $99? Yeah, or like, $99 yeah, a yeah, month. Yeah, which is a really low entry point if you think from a developer perspective, which is great. Whereas some other devices, you have to buy like a very expensive device up front and then extra licensing on yeah. top of that. Whereas with Spectacles, obviously, you don't have that, which is pretty cool. Um, What's what's the aim with developers that were you know were for, for right now? Is it is it kind of just building interesting experiences, seeing what we can do with the device? What what's the kind of key aim for the developer engagement? I guess yeah, it's exactly yeah. what you said. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're hoping developers help yep. build out interesting use cases. I mean, they probably have their own niches and spaces that they understand much better yep. than we do at Snap, and so. We're just excited for developers to build stuff that they find useful, for they sure. find interesting, and hopefully that will uh, be interesting to others as well. I think so. And, I, you know, I, I was trying, obviously, there was a boxing app and there was like a golf app and stuff like that. And there's some quite creative uh, uses as well. Like, obviously, there's a companion app so you can use the, the phone as like your golf club um, mm-hmm. for swinging and stuff. So there's a, a few kind of quite interesting integrations between the phone and the, gla- the glasses as well or the spectacles because you know, where people are going to have a smartphone anyway. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We know that this isn't replacing the phone anytime no. soon, that they're going to be carrying around a phone whenever they have their spectacles with them. And so might as well take advantage of that. There's so much the phone can do. For sure. And there's certain things the phone can do more easily than mm. you can in glasses. And so ideally you combine the best of both worlds and one, you know, give developers access to that and then two in the system also take advantage of that totally and you know i mean if i give my initial thoughts i've obviously only just uh, tried the spectacles today but the first thing that that you know caught my eye is it's an interesting looking device like it's uh, <laughs> It's, it's quite light. It's not a super heavy device and actually fairly comfortable. Um, initially looking at it, you might think that it might not be comfortable, but actually after my experience of using it for a bit today, um, I actually found it pretty comfortable. Um, obviously the the AR or mixed reality, whatever you want to call it, um, overlay is really quite bright. Um, obviously it's gone for a, a portrait uh, view rather than landscape, which is interesting. I haven't seen that before. So uh, quite an interesting kind of take yeah. on the well, no, That's uh, a good call. Yeah. It is super bright. Yeah. yeah. And that was just Designed so that you can actually wear these outside and yeah. still be able to see. Which is, you know, and, and, you know, having worked with HoloLens for a long time, uh, that was obviously one of the big uh, challenges. Yeah. We have a room up on, uh, in, in this facility in London, which purposely was designed for HoloLens by being quite dim so that the, the HoloLens light would actually uh, really be bright. But like outside, it was always a challenge. And there were mm. even like third party accessories for like, you know, almost like ND yeah. filters for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the screen. Sunglasses yeah. like film. Totally. That. Yeah. Yeah, 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 over yeah, and exactly. Lenses. And um, I remember Trimble even had like a, an actual physical clip-on uh, mm. kind of uh, sunglasses, like to your point for uh, for Hollands. But yeah, like a screen really bright. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And something you didn't get to see today is that there's yeah. also automatic tinting. Oh, so nice. there's a brightness sensor there. So oh, if very you go cool. outside and it's sunny outside, it'll automatically tint the lenses. That is very cool. Yeah, and I guess you know just to wrap up, I mean. What's next for for the kind of spectacles and stuff? I guess uh, I guess the priority right now is onboarding developers, exploring. But I guess you know what's the kind of strategic direction I guess for you guys? Yeah. So what you said is definitely the yeah. goal. Ultimately, yeah. the vision is that uh, everyone or a lot of people, at least in the world, have a pair of these on, and it provides computing overlaid on the world uh, that everyone can can use together uh, that enhances you know their everyday activities um, and so working on getting there mm-hmm. was yeah starting with working with developers to hopefully build out those use cases mm-hmm. and interesting experiences on the device um, on our side at snap we're also doing a lot of work to just make the device more usable For uh, sure. improve uh, based on you know our early user feedback yeah. from our developers um, Ideally, keep keep working on form factor, keep working on experiences and content. Very cool device. And Summer, I wanted to just say thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Alex.